Good morning, brothers, sisters, and friends. I'm thankful you could join us for our Langenberg Evangelical Fellowship online service today. My name is Nate Colson, and I am privileged to bring the Word of God to you via internet. If you would call LEF your church home or came by this video by happenstance, welcome. And again, thank you for dropping by. Now, I have heard that the camera adds 10 pounds, so uh, if I seem a little heavier than usual, uh, we'll chalk that up to uh, the amount of per uh, sitting a person does during self-isolation. But uh, what a time we live in uh, when you can be a modern-day superhero by just staying home. Our call to worship today will come from Psalm 130. Psalm 130. So please open your Bibles and follow along. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. What a beautiful passage of Scripture that exemplifies the forgiveness of the Lord and an encouragement that there is much reward to those that wait on him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your loving kindness to your children. I thank you that you hear our supplications and that you are near to us all the time. I thank you that forgiveness is found in you by your great mercy. I ask as I preach your word that you would give me the words to speak and that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. I desire to glorify you this day, Father, but I recognize I cannot do any good thing apart from you. May it only be your truth spoken today. And I ask that you'd be working within our hearts to be ready to receive what, is, uh, what it is that you may be seeing to us today. I thank you and give you glory to your name. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So, my sermon is called, Are You Listening? Are you listening is a phrase I'm sure all of us are familiar with. I have heard it often be that from parents, teachers, and my wife at the odd time. Some of you may remember that I had shared a statistic not too long ago about our attention spans being shorter than a goldfish's. Their attention span lasting only eight seconds and apparently the modern average individual today is worse than that. This is no doubt due to the lifestyle our society encourages us to live by and also the ways that technology has permeated our lives. We live fast, we work hard, and we find a rest in ways that give us instantaneous gratification. It is no wonder why this question of an individual's attentiveness is inquired of so often. And unfortunately, this lack of attention can be mostly expressed in a believer's life. And our ability to hear from the one that should be at the head of our lives becomes more difficult. That would be to our disadvantage, especially in a time such as this. We are currently in a time of pandemic. And as the world reels in anxiety and fear because this is something we had never anticipated would happen, believers are found in that same crowd because they too are anxious. But why? Why would the Bride of Christ be so frantic at this time too? Our church and many other churches are explaining that we have nothing to be anxious about because our faith is placed in Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The living God who is sovereign over all things and encourages time and time again in his word that those who place their faith in him have nothing to be anxious about. Yet anxiety is still present in the body. I believe it is due to the fact that many of us aren't listening, or at least aren't doing so intentionally. 
I think that the white noise of the world has effectively made us deaf to the voice of Jesus Christ. So that leads me to ask you, friends, are you listening? Do you hear the Lord? Now, please understand something, brothers and sisters. I struggle with this too. But this is a hard question I think we need to ask ourselves, including me, and change our posture if necessary, especially at this time. What better time to do this than when many of us are stuck at home and are forced to slow down because the rest of the world is doing so? So let us turn in our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3. We will be reading through verses 1 to 10, but before I begin, I will give a brief background of this book. We are going to be reading about a young boy named Samuel who was introduced during a pivotal time in Israel's history. During the time in which this is written, Israel as a whole is spiritually desolate. The priesthood was corrupt, idolatry was practiced, and the Ark of the Covenant was on the tabernacle, and the list goes on. Through reading First and Second Samuel, we would be witness to a great change in the nation of Israel. For instance, Israel had been under the direction and correction of priests and judges prior to Samuel. Samuel, being a man who was captivated by the word of the Lord once he began to know it, eventually became considered a prophet over time as his words became indistinguishable with the Lord's. He could be likened to Moses because he walked with the Lord daily and was given to God in complete service. Furthermore, the group of tribes that originally made up Israel became a nation under a centralized monarchy. Samuel is a key figure in this transition as he would be the individual to anoint Saul as king of Israel but then anoint David much later on. Thus, being an instrument used by God's sovereign hand to begin the kingship of David that the Messiah was prophesied to come from. To say Samuel was an important figure in the Old Testament could be a bit of an understatement. But before he became this prophet of God, he would first have to be called and he would have to listen. Let us now read through a scripture passage this morning. Again, that is found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. It happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place, now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see well, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, that the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for he called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood and called, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The first few verses give us the setting of this moment as Samuel encounters God. As verse 1 would state, Samuel was just a boy when he was called by God. Many scholars would agree that he was more than likely 12 at the time this was taking place. And as we can understand by the text, he was being trained into the priesthood of God by Eli, the priest and current judge of Israel. We also notice here in verse 1 that the word of the Lord was rare at that time. Visions were infrequent. What this is saying is that the communication between Israel and God had been limited and God had not been giving Eli revelations. This was due to transgressions in the house of Eli. Verse 2 would express how Eli was advanced in years by his eyesight being dim so he was unable to see well. This does not just speak to his physical ability to see but also his ability to see spiritually 
and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Verse 3 gives us the understanding that this moment was happening during the night, possibly before dawn. The lamp still being lit would be our indicator. The lamp that would be in the tabernacle is filled with olive oil and lit at dusk. It would burn all through the night until it was dawn or until it had gone out. So since the lamp is said to have still been lit, we would understand that this event is taking place during the night. So our setting is their tabernacle at night with both Eli and Samuel sleeping. Now, as we continue on through the scripture, three points will be drawn from Samuel's encounter with God that will speak to us personally, giving us an idea of what we need to do to hear God's voice. The first point is we need to know God's voice. We need to know his voice. As we had read in verse 7, Samuel did not know the voice of God. Samuel, woken from his sleep three times by someone calling his name, and as we can see, he believed it to be Eli. What I find most troubling about this is it took three times for Eli to finally discern what was happening. Obviously, neither Samuel or Eli understood the source of his, this voice at first. It is no surprise that Samuel did not yet know the word of the Lord because he was just a boy that was now beginning to be mentored by Eli the priest. But as I said earlier, Eli's eyes had grown dim, both physically and spiritually. He was no longer able to see clearly the works of the Lord. This man was the head priest of Israel. He was supposed to be the mouthpiece of God for the entire nation. Eli's life and career were meant to be focused primarily on God, yet he did not recognize him. This speaks to the place that Eli's heart was at, but it can also speak to ours. We would understand that God speaks to us through his word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God, and it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. We would also know that Jesus is the word become flesh. John speaks to this in his gospel in chapter 1 through to verse 18. So why don't we go to John, the gospel of John, go to chapter 1, and we'll read through to verse 18. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now let's jump down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me was, has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. But when it comes to hearing God's voice in your life, are you more like Samuel, who due to his inexperience is unable to distinguish God's voice in his life? Or are you like Eli, who has become blind to the word of God and the working of his spirit due to sin hardening his heart? Maybe you're both, a person who seeks the voice of the individual closest to you rather than seeking God's. Either way, there is one thing we all need to recognize, and that is we need to be in God's word for us to hear him. If you are like Samuel, God's word will teach you. It will grow you in righteousness and equip you for everything that God, by his sovereignty, has set before you in your life to accomplish. If you're like Eli, the word of God will expose your sin. It will lead you to repentance and humility. The word will soften your heart and make you sensitive to his voice again. If you're a combination of both Samuel and Eli, the word will correct you to understand that it is the wisdom of God 
you should be seeking, and not that of other men or trusting in your own wisdom. But this world will do its best to keep you from knowing his voice. It will confuse you, mislead you. It will do everything in its power to distract you. It will speak lies to you, making you believe you cannot come before God because it's been so long since you spent time with the big man upstairs. It will lead you to feeling inadequate, unwelcomed, unworthy, unforgiven. Or worse yet, it will lead you to being proud, thereby making you think you do not need God. Be you young and inexperienced in your walk with God or older and blind, the lifestyle the world tries to sell you will keep you from ever changing that. Whatever it is that the enemy can throw at you, he will do his best to keep you from knowing the truth and free gift of salvation given by Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. But let us not stay stuck at where we are today and cease in the further maturing of our faith, but rather let us keep running the race. The world tells us today that we have everything to fear and that there is no hope. I say that's the farthest thing from the truth. But in order to know that, we must be ready. Once we know where his voice is coming from, we must be ready to receive it. That brings us to our next point. We need to be ready. Let us look again at verse 8 and 9 of 1 Samuel chapter 3. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy, and Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So we see after the third time Samuel was called and came to Eli, Eli then began to discern what was happening. With this discernment, Eli gives the boy instruction to go lie down, and if Samuel is called again, then he must provide a response. See the language used here. Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you, you shall say. This is a language of direct order, not of encouragement, and it was an order to be ready. He had to be prepared to give an answer if he was called again. The modern-day believer can consider being ready in multiple ways. Being ready could relate to us preparing our hearts before reading the Word of God, taking communion, or when we start out each morning in service for the Lord. Being ready could relate to preparing ourselves for ministry by studying the Word of God and becoming more knowledgeable of it. Or we could be ready for the Lord's return, like it directs us to be in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, where it says, for this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Being ready requires a certain posture. You have to be alert, vigilant, patient, sober-minded, and focused. But that form of thinking is something our society really does not encourage. Our society says live your lives in a way that you can enjoy them now. Why work and take precautions when you can receive what you want today by signing, signing that dotted line? The world is yours, but the Word of God says no. You have to be preparing yourselves for a day that is coming. You have to be growing in sanctification and live for your neighbors, not yourself. You have to be warring with the flesh and its sinful desires regularly. Your reward is coming later on. And people, we cannot do that by just sitting around. Again, we consider the turmoil the world is currently in, and so many of us are struggling to deal with the anxiety chaos brings. It is as if we as believers were not prepared. A time such as this truly shows how uncertain the future is and how little power we have over the course of our lives. But brothers and sisters, again, I say to you, the Lord is bigger than this, and we have nothing to be anxious about. So we know now where we hear the voice of God from. We now know where, uh, what posture uh, we should be in, the posture of readiness to listen intentionally to the Lord's promises. And now we move on to our last point. 
our need to obey. So last point being our need to obey. In verse 10, we see that God comes again to Samuel, calling his name, Samuel, Samuel. And the boy replies, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel was now aware of who the voice was coming from, was prepared for this moment, and obediently followed through with Eli's instructions. Now, two important words come from this phrase, one being servant and the other being listening. Both of these words represent obedience. The first word servant is obviously a word that represents obedience. The definition for servant is an individual who's devoted to or guided by something. So this is a very clear statement that Samuel sees himself as someone that is devoted to God's leading. But we miss the proper understanding of what listening or hears, as other translations say, represents, because this word is translated from Hebrew to English. The Hebrew word used for listening or hears is shema. And shema means to hear in obedience or to listen with interest. Again, we think to the time someone asked us, are you listening? And many of us could probably say, well, yes, but we weren't doing so intentionally. I can imagine all of you parents and maybe some spouses uh, know the term, it went in one ear, but then it went out the other. So obviously, they were not practicing this shema. They were not listening it intentionally. Samuel was saying he'll be obedient to the words that come from God and follow through with what the Lord willed. If we were to continue reading through this passage of scripture, we would see that the word that God was giving to Samuel was a word of judgment upon Eli and his household for their sins. Bearing that news would be a hard thing to do. It even says that Samuel was afraid to tell Eli, but he did. Samuel listened and did what the Lord called him to do in obedience, and we are to do the same. Brothers and sisters, we need to be obedient to carry out the word of the Lord, be it a word of joy or judgment, forgiveness or rebuke. We need to listen intentionally to what God is saying to us today, tomorrow, and until the return of Christ, for the word of the Lord is everlasting. But again, this may take a change in our posture. Many of us may be so gripped by the world that our daily routine has lacked any time for the word of God. Maybe we struggle to find time to have fellowship with God because we believe the lie that we have no time. But we should have a response like Samuel, a response of devotion and obedience. We should daily be saying, speak, for your servant is listening. In conclusion, I want you all to ask yourselves a sincere question. Are you listening? Am I listening? Do you know the voice of God? Are you prepared to receive it? And are you listening in obedience, readily applying it to your lives? If not, then change your posture. Make the most of this time. I say this out of a very deep love for all of you. Your relationship with Christ is something of internal, eternal importance. God is bigger than this virus. We truly have nothing to fear, for even death no longer carries a sting. But you will not fully grasp this truth until you are listening. <clears throat> so that concludes our sermon. And uh, before I conclude our online service with a word of prayer, I'd like to invite you to reach out to myself or Pastor Dennis or Pastor Brian if you have a prayer request or need someone to talk to. We will be providing online services <clears throat> until we can gather together as a church again. But please, just know that we are here for you. Would you please bow your head in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in this time of chaos, I thank you that you are near to us, that you hear our prayers, 
and that you speak to us through your word. I thank you that in times of anxiety, we can turn to you and find our peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, I pray for all of our listeners today that you would be stilling their hearts if they're anxious and that you would be drawing them near to you by your spirit. It is a true statement that you alone are good, Father, and I pray that those that are listening would come to know this, that they too would wake up like Samuel and be absolutely captivated by your word. Father, I ask for your mercy on this coronavirus situation. I ask that there would be a swift end to this virus, and if that not be your will, help us remain faithful in you and be so willing to extend mercy to our neighbors. Have mercy on those that are currently suffering with this virus, O Lord. We hurt for them. I also thank you, Father, that you're with our congregation and that you know what they need before they even speak it. But still, I ask on their behalf that you would answer their needs quickly. We need you, Lord. We find our comfort and our strength in your name. We know that you are faithful, God, so we look forward to seeing your hand move. Now may he who is seated upon the throne, who is clothed in light and majesty, and has been given authority over all things, may Jesus Christ bless you and protect you all. Amen. Thank you.